Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our August the 14th lesson of 2022 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition, Lesson 226. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. If I so choose, I can depart this world entirely. It is not death which makes this possible, but it is change of mind about the purpose of the world. If I believe it has a value as I see it now, so will it still remain for me. But if I see no value in the world as I behold it, nothing that I want to keep as mine or search for as a goal, it will depart from me. For I have not sought for illusions to replace the truth. For I have not sought for illusions to replace the truth. And the prayer says, Father, my home awaits my glad return. Your arms are open and I hear your voice. What need have I to linger in a place of vain desires and of broken dreams when heaven can so easily be mine? <laughs> okay, let's go take a look in our text reading. You know, that sure does remind me of what we read in chapter 20. Four. Uh, we're in chapter 25 for today, ready for section two, the appointed task. But you know that what we what we just read reminds me of uh, in that last section, the meeting place in chapter 24, paragraph 67, the test of everything on earth. You remember what it was? What's the test of everything on earth? The test of everything on earth is simply this. What is it for? What is it for? The answer makes it what it is for you. It has no meaning of itself, yet you can give reality to it according to the purpose which you serve. Here you are but means along with it. God is a means as well as end. In heaven, means and end are one and one with him. This is a state of true, true creation found not within time, but in eternity. To no one here is this describable, nor is there any way to learn what this condition means. Not till you go past learning to the given. Not, and the given is capitalized. Not till you make again a holy home for your creations. Is it understood? Wow. So we need God's uh, transport, uh, his ability to lift us into the new way. Not something you're going to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, as they say. But the, the main thing I wanted to really bring your attention to is the test of everything on earth is simply this. What is it for? The answer makes it what it is for you. We want to start using our meditations a lot just to say, what am I doing this for? Why, why am I attracted to this? Is this valuable? Is this something that deserves my attention? Or is it just another illusion? Okay, chapter 25, the appointed task under the remedy. It cannot be that it is hard to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, since it is he who does it. It cannot be that it is hard to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, since it is he who does it. Remember, your job is just to have the little willingness to, to go from point A to point B. He'll, he'll show you how to get there. He'll lead you. It'll, he'll do it all for you. Your job is not to figure that part out. Your part's just be willing. And in the doing of it, will you learn the body merely seems to be the means to do it. For the mind is his, and so it must be yours. His holiness directs the body through the mind at one with him. And you are manifest unto your holy brother as he to you. Here is the meeting of the holy Christ unto himself. 
nor are any differences perceived to stand between the aspects of his holiness, which meet and join and raise him to his Father, whole and pure and worthy of his everlasting love. Paragraph 5. How can you manifest the Christ in you except you look on holiness and see him there? How can you manifest the Christ in you except you look on holiness and see the Christ there? Perception tells you you are manifest in what you see. Behold the body and you will believe that you are there. And every body that you look upon reminds you of yourself, your sinfulness, your evil, and above all, your death. And would you not despise the one who tells you this and seek his death instead? The message and the messenger are one, and you must see your brother as yourself. Framed in his body, you will see your sinfulness wherein you stand condemned. Set in his holiness, the Christ in him proclaims himself as you. So we want to start seeing people not as a body, but as the holiness of the Christ in them, uh, the holiness of God, their oneness with you and God in their sinlessness, not their ability to attack or deceive or to be vulnerable, but to be complete in every way and wholly happy and joyous. We've got to look beyond even what they might believe is going on in their world to see their truth. We can see it for them. And indeed we must if we're going to reach our own uh, salvation. Perception is a choice. Paragraph 6. Perception is a choice of what you want yourself to be. The world you want to live in and the state in which you think your mind will be content and satisfied. It chooses where you think your safety lies at your decision. It reveals yourself to you as you would have you be. And always is it faithful to your purpose from which it never separates, nor gives the slightest witness unto anything the purpose in your mind upholdeth not. Perception is a part of what it is your purpose to behold, for means and end are never separate. And thus you learn, what seems to have a life, a part, has none. You are the means for God, not separate, nor with a life apart from His. His life is manifest in you who are His Son. Each aspect of himself is framed in holiness and perfect purity, in love celestial and so complete it wishes only that it may release all that it looks upon unto itself. So you're an aspect of the Christ and so is every brother and sister you look upon. Each aspect of himself, of the Christ. Uh, let's start at the beginning. You are the means for God, not separate, nor with a life apart from His. His life is manifest in you who are His Son. Each aspect of Himself is framed in holiness and perfect purity, in love celestial, and so complete it wishes only that it may release all that it looks upon unto itself. Its radiance shines through each body that it looks upon and brushes all its darkness into light merely by looking past it to the light. The veil is lifted through its gentleness and nothing hides the face of Christ from its beholders. And both of you stand there before him now to let him draw aside the veil that seems to keep you separate and apart. So what you have to do is have that inner wish to see your brother's holiness, which is going to look beyond the body, and you're going to actually see your oneness with him and your purity with God and, and him and yourself. Let's uh, stop there for today. And uh, let me mark this so we'll know where to pick up tomorrow. 
And uh, let's go take a look in our uh, text, or in our man, or, uh, no, I'm manual for teacher and text. I'm saying everything except what I mean. The workbook for students lesson, 226. My home awaits me, I will hasten there. But before we read that again, we're going to read what is forgiveness, which we need to do every day. But let's also take just a, again a look at paragraph 7 in the, int in the introduction to part 2. I'd like to, to read that to you. Before I do it, though, uh, let me tell you about another bean. And this is a warm weather bean. And it's, um, it's a long bean is what they're called. And there's a, there's a few varieties, but I want to talk about one of them. It's the Vigna unguacolata. I don't know if I pronounced that genus and species correctly. A staple crop of East Asia where they have been grown for centuries. Delicious young pods are very tender, crisp, and nearly never have strings. Easy to grow in all but the coldest climate. So this is just as exactly opposite of the runner beans that tend to like cool weather. These like hot weather. And the one I'd like to tell you about is the Chinese light green long bean. The Chinese light green. This noodle bean reaches 20 to 30 inches long. Fun for kids' gardens or dramatic effects in edible landscaping. The impossibly long pods make a statement in the garden. Dripping chandelier-like from lush vines and seemingly growing inches a day. Beyond its ornamental value, the beans are tender, flavorful, and highly nutritious, high in vitamin B, C, and protein. The plants love the intense heat of summer, producing profusions of pods as the temperature creeps into the high 90s. So that's your Chinese light green long bean. Okay, and I also wanted to show you the difference between uh, that white oak behind us. We're still talking a little bit about, about the white oak. There's the leaf again. Um, you know, that's a, a twig off it with several leaves. But there's a, one of the flakes of the bark. I was trying to tell you that the bark is more flaky than uh, your the, 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 the Quercus alba, which is the white oak, is much flakier than the, the ridged bark of the Quercus stellata, which is also a white looking. And they some, sometimes can look very similar. I think they even can cross and you can have, uh, you know, a, a, a part Corcus stellata and Corcus alba as a cross. But for the most part, your Corcus uh, albas, the true white oaks, have this flaky type bark, and that's a real telltale sign that you've got it. And um, I've got something else I wanted to tell you. I found this on uh, Rx list. Uh, is that where? Yeah, that's where I found it. Uh, oak bark might be safe when taken three to four days for diarrhea. Can cause serious side effects such as stomach and intestinal problems and kidney and liver damage. I wanted to make sure that I gave you the contraindications also. You know, you, you, you don't want to just use these things indiscriminately is what I'm trying to say. Oak bark might be safe for most people when applied directly to the skin for up to two to three weeks. So, you know, you can take it internally, it looks like, for, a, a, you know, three or four days, they're saying, without any real negative effects. But uh, longer than that might have some contraindications. Oak bark, it said in there, is used as a tea for diarrhea, colds, fever, coughs, bronchitis, uh, for stimulating appetite and improving digestion. But it said that in that particular uh, website, it said that... The, Many of those things are not documented as actually having scientifically proven effects. But, you know, it, what it's been used for in the past is what I'm trying to uh, let you know about. Okay, let's go take a look at, um, oh, the introduction. And it says, and now we wait in silence, unafraid and certain of your coming. This is paragraph seven in the introduction. And now we wait in silence. Remember, I'm, I'm pointing to this is what we want to do when we come into those quiet times of, of rest. Now we wait in silence, unafraid and certain of your coming. So fearless and 
certain of God's coming. We have sought to find our way by following the guide you sent to us. We did not know the way, but you did not forget us. And we know that you will not forget us now. We ask but that your ancient promises be kept, which are your will to keep. We will with you in asking this. The Father and the Son, whose holy will created all that is, can fail in nothing. In this certainty we undertake these last few steps to you and rest in confidence upon your love, which will not fail the Son you, who calls to you. Paragraph 8. And so we start upon the final part of this one holy year, which we have spent together in the search for truth and God, who is its one creator. We have found the way he chose for us and made the choice to follow it as he would have us go. His hands, his hand has held us up. His thoughts have lit the darkness of our minds. His love has called to us unceasingly since time began. We had a wish that God would fail to have the Son whom he created for himself. We wanted to go our own way. That's what he calls the authority problem. We wanted to make the world the way we wanted it. We had a wish that God would fail to have the Son whom he created for himself. We wanted God to change himself and be what we would make of him. And we believed that our insane desires were the truth. Now we are glad that this is all undone. And how did we undo it? Because we kept checking with our peace of mind and we started recognizing that many of the things that we thought we wanted really weren't bringing us peace. At least that's the reason why we want to keep checking in with ourselves and saying, am I at peace? And we believe that our insane desires were the truth. Now we are glad that this is all undone and we no longer think illusions true. The memory of God is shimmering across the wide horizons of our minds. A moment more, and it will rise again. A moment more, and we who are God's Son are safely home, where He would have us be. Wow, what, what, boy, that's a nice place to keep remember our lesson for today. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. Okay, let's look at what is forgiveness. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in this view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection, tightening its chains so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure, less easily accessible to doubt, and further kept from reason. What can come between a fixed projection and the aim that it has chosen as its needed goal? An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action, it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality, nor seeks to twist it to appearances that it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. He who would not forgive must judge, for he must justify his failure to forgive. But he who would forgive himself must learn to welcome truth exactly as it is. Do nothing then and let forgiveness show you what to do. Through him who is your guide, your savior and defender, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success, he has forgiven you already, for such is his function given him by God. Now must you share his function and forgive whom he has saved, whose sinlessness he sees, and whom he honors 
as the Son of God. Wow. So we don't want to be holding on to those illusions that have made us um, lost our peace, but lay them, lay them at the altar and let and and you know let let them go and be at peace. Let things be as they are. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. If I so choose, I can depart this world entirely. If I so choose, I can impart this world entirely. We just got to keep asking ourselves, what is it for? What is what I'm doing for? What is what I'm thinking for? If I so choose, I can depart this world entirely. It is not death which makes this possible, but it is change of mind about the purpose of the world. If I believe it has a value as I see it now, so will it still remain for me. But if I see no value in the world as I behold it, nothing that I want to keep as mine or search for as a goal, it will depart from me. For I have not sought for illusions to replace the truth. And the prayer says, Father, my home awaits my glad return. Your arms are open, and I hear your voice. What need have I to linger in a place of vain desires and of broken dreams, when heaven can so easily be mine? <laughs> my home awaits me. I will hasten there. Thank you all so much for hastening to our home together. Until tomorrow, be sure to do your meditations morning and evening and every hourly remembrance. Tell yourself, my home awaits me. I will hasten there. My home awaits me. I will hasten there. <laughs>